Let's ask a legendary trader in the oil patch, Mark Fisher with MBF Clearing. Good to see you, Fish. Happy New Year. Welcome back. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm good. Uh, looking at oil just before you're coming on here. TI's at 53, Brent's at 55. Sustainable? Can this continue to go up? Are the prices sustainable? Probably. Are they going to continue to go up? I think with all the index rebalancing that took place in the um, last week, I think the easy money has been made being long energy futures. Now we're going to see whether or not really there's an issue between supply and demand. But all the rebalancing and all the money that came into oil around the first of the year and through all the index buying is over with. So it, now it's really a, a, a supply and demand issue. It's, a, it's been a recovery play, right? I mean, the, the oil market, like every other market, is a forward-looking deal, correct? Yeah, I mean, like, last time I was on with you, in the beginning of, uh, you know, when, when May crude went negative, there was nobody There was nobody bullish in oil, and, except for maybe Goldman out in the, later on in the, uh, out in the year. Now everyone's bullish. So to me, I'm a little hesitant to be buying energy futures here unless you could see um, some supply shocks or something happening with Iran. But I think the, uh, the energy equities are definitely... It's still going to be you know, a good buy here. What, what's interesting, before we get to some equities that, that you like, even on the other side of the pandemic, right, once we get back to whatever normal is, is going to feel and, and look like, you're still going to have a supply-demand issue, aren't you? Aren't you still going to have more supply on the market than demand can bear? You would think that that's what everyone thinks. I'm not so sure about that. I think that Saudis cut last week. I think you're seeing different issues of, you know, how quickly will shale come back with, with the price of oil being $50? I, 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 I like to trade price. And I like to trade price action. I like to trade momentum. And to me, will oil get to, you know, from the mid-50s to you know, the 60s? I don't know. But I do think that if, if, the, if the market just stabilizes here, I think all the energy equities are going to represent still value. I think people are going to go ahead, you know, the ones that don't, that still don't, you know, that will buy non-ESG you know, ESG stocks and continue to buy the energy. Well, what about that idea that you just raised? This, this notion that, you know, there are now, whether it's institutionally or others, who won't buy, uh, you know, old, dirty, uh, fossil fuel plays in the patch, and now they're looking towards clean energy, and it's all about ESG. That's legit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, if you, if, you know, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of, of the of the stock market world that won't touch cigarette companies, and for a long time, when the cigarette industry was you know was a uh, anathema to the to the market, those stocks, the Marshall, those stocks did really well. So, I, I think that. Select energy names are still going to be represent good value. I think that you're going to see the range resources and the Southwest and the EQTs and even the Exxon Mobiles and BPs. They're still going to be as long as we don't revisit, you know, the forty dollar range, the low forty dollar range. I think those names are going to be fine. But like range resources, that's at the top of your list. Um, Southwestern Energy, you yeah. own as well, yeah. uh, and that's a very much a natural gas side of the story yeah. that that you like better than crude, correct? Yes. I mean, if you look last, when I was on last last time in um, in May or in April, okay, I told you those names acted well. They've acted even better since then. I do think, though, that natural gas is a unique commodity because really it's like, how to describe this? It's like owning milk in a refrigerator. So 98% of the time, there's plenty of milk to give out to everybody. So the price of the milk doesn't explode. Once every... 10 cycles, 15 cycles, there's not enough milk. And then you have to have the price, you know, skyrocket in order to inhibit demand. So the question is, do you want to own the milk or do you want to own the refrigerator? And obviously if you own the refrigerators, if you own capacity, if you own um, um, the, uh, the storage, you've done really well. And I still think that with RRC, SWN, you know, EPD, those names, I don't think you can really get hurt as long as, you know, the market doesn't, you know, fall out of bed, and as long as energy doesn't go back into the low force. Yeah.